Okay, so for this type of a problem, um, we normally think of the ball that is hanging on a string as a pendulum, right, that can swing back and forth. Only in this case, it's being hit by some other object. Uh, in this case, we have a, a two kilogram ball that's striking it. Um, and that's gonna cause this pendulum to swing up um, a certain amount. And the arc of that swing is the, or I'm sorry, the radius of that arced swing is the length of the string, which is 0.135 meters. Um, and let's go ahead and call, I'm gonna call this one and this two, right? So I have M1 equals uh, two kilograms, and two, the hanging ball, eight kilograms. I could call those M's if I wanted to, but I don't, I'm not gonna do that for this problem. And let's see what else. Oh, so because this is an object being hit by a smaller object that shot at it, we often call this a ballistic pendulum because it's being shot by some ballistic thing. In this case, it's the smaller ball. Okay. Um, well, so if you can imagine after the second ball has been hit by the first ball, it is going to have some forward velocity. Now that velocity happens to be at a right angle to the string, and as that ball continues to move around the path, the velocity will always be tangent to the path. Now that velocity we're assuming is going to be consistent, and hopefully you recognize that this swing, this curved path, Really, this is a centripetal motion problem where there is some tension in the string T that acts as our centripetal force. Okay, so the tension in the string is our centripetal force. Uh, I'm sorry. And we have weight acting down. Now, at different parts in the swing, uh, the component of the weight that is centripetal is going to change depending on what this you know, angle is as it moves. But thankfully, this problem asks for the tension only just after the collision, which means that we can use the fact that the weight force goes down and the tension goes up to write an equation for our net centripetal force, where T minus the weight is our centripetal force, so we can set it equal to mv squared over r. All right, so basically what we need to do to find the tension is add these two quantities together. We know the mass, we know the radius, we know the acceleration due to gravity. Oh, and I should be careful. Let's call this m2 so we don't get confused. Um, but the thing that I don't know is this V. I don't know what the velocity will be at that instant. So the purpose or the goal of this problem is to go ahead and try and address the collision that happens and predict the final velocity of that second ball. Once you've predicted the final velocity of that ball, then we can plug it in here and get attention. Um, so let's do that. Let's take a look at, right, this is, this is our centripetal force portion of the problem. Um, let's take a look at the beginning of the problem, though, where it is a momentum collision, right? So we've got some momentum to cover. Okay, so for the momentum, I know that momentum is conserved, poop, and in the beginning, ball two has no momentum, ball one has all the momentum, so M1, V1, not. Uh, and then afterwards, it says that it is an elastic collision, so that means they don't stick together. A perfectly inelastic collision is when they stick together. Um, so instead, they bounce apart, and I'm going to have M1, V1 plus M2, V2. Now, you probably see right away that there is not enough information to solve for both final velocities after. So what you need to do is take advantage of the fact that it's elastic and therefore the kinetic energy is conserved. Um, and we could write out the kinetic energy equations, but instead we're just going to go ahead and jump to our little shortcut where we know that V1 plus V1 naught is going to equal V2 plus V2 naught, where thankfully the velocity of the, um, the hanging ball is zero, so we can get rid of it. All right, now ideally what we want to do is we want to find uh, V2, right? We want to find the final velocity of the hanging ball because if we can do that, we can plug it into 
our equation to figure out the tension. So to do that, um, I'm just going to go ahead and do this substitution. Okay, so I'm going to plug in V1 because by doing that, I'm eliminating it. Um, and therefore, my answer will be in terms of V2, and I can solve for V2 and get the velocity that I need. So, so let's do that. This becomes M1 V2 minus V1 naught. Okay, plus M2 V2, M1 V1 naught. I'm going to factor this, M1 V2 minus M1, sorry, this would be V2, M1 V1 naught plus M2 V2, M1 V1 naught. Okay, so since I know that these two masses, um, they share, uh, well, I mean, not that they share. I could say that they share a one kilogram relationship. I'm going to go ahead and write this as 2m, this as 8m, um, and then replace all of the m1s with 2m. Then I'm going to take all of the m2s and replace them with 8m. Okay, this lets me cancel out m, so I get 2v1 naught equals 2v2 minus 2v1 naught plus 8v2. All right, so I have this equation, and I have this equation that I need, I'm sorry, we already combined it. I have this equation, and I need to simplify it more. Um, we can combine terms. When I add this to the right, I get 4v1 naught and then 10 v2, so therefore v2 is equal to 4 over 10 times v1 naught, or 4 over 10 times, what's the initial velocity, 5 meters per second. Okay, so we're going to get, what, 20 over 10, so 2 meters per second. All right, so now I know, now that I know, um, the velocity 2 meters per second is what the hanging ball has right after the collision, then I can go ahead and plug that into the portion that we got with our centripetal force. So let's get rid of our momentum conversation. And let's go ahead and solve for the tension. Okay, I'm going to have mass 2 is 8 kilograms. The velocity is 2 meters a second, square the whole thing, divide that by the radius of 0.135 meters, and then I'm going to add uh, the mass is 8 kilograms right, times, uh, we'll use 10 meters per second squared because that's a little bit easier. So our first term is 237.04 newtons. Our second is 80 newtons, giving us a grand total of 317.04 newtons, which is the tension in the rope. Wait, wait, wait. No, it's not. Because I can't convert centimeters to meters. The radius should be 1.35 meters which actually has a pretty good effect, 1.35 meters. So instead, you're going to get 23.7 newtons plus 80 newtons, giving you a grand total of 103.7 newtons. Now, remember, if you use 9.8, you get slight, something slightly different.